Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. We're going to be doing a little wall at the front of the property along the uh, back of city sidewalk. The main purpose of this wall is to slow down uh, out of control vehicles from uh, running into the house. I guess it happened across the street already once. This is a pretty busy street right here and intersection. So we're going to be doing a little short um, three foot high wall. It's going to have some nice columns, 12 inch columns every uh, 12 feet or so. And then we're going to stucco it. We're going to put a gate in right at the uh, sidewalk entrance to the house. So all of this footing that we have here, we're going to set down below lawn about three, four inches. That way the lawn can grow back over it because we are using the 12 inch columns and the 8 inch block or 6 inch block in between we're going to have a little space between the back of sidewalk and the 6, six inch wide block we'll have to fill that in later on after the entire build to flush that out and you'll see what I mean as you go through both of these parts how we do that this actually happens to be my son's job here so they're going to put rebar. The rebar, the verticals are going to be every 16 inch on center. So every block is going to have a piece of steel in it. Not every cell. It's every other cell, but every block will have a vertical piece of rebar in it. And the whole wall will be solid grouted to kind of be a buffer. I mean, it's not going to stop a car, but it will slow it down a little bit. Right here, this intersection, I guess people do a lot of donuts. Um, they have a few races up and down the street here So sometimes when they get into those donuts, they lose it coming out and they went through that house across the street there once already Here's the concrete I was talking about that space between the six wide block and the back of sidewalk because of the it offsets it because of the columns so we didn't have the he didn't have the chicken legs to tie the line on this the second day so he just stacked some blocks on either end to hold the line we have the protective caps on top of the rebar this actually set over the weekend before we uh, topped it off and grouted. So checking across the columns at the gate entrance is crucial that they're level and plumb to make the new gate in there. It looks like they've got a grout bag going also for some of the head joints that were missed along the way. So they're just going back with the grout bag. We have to do a little radius to match that sidewalk there.
but because we're going to be stuccoing this we're not going to have to cut the block and do anything fancy to wrap it around this little radius Now that the block wall is finished, now we'll move on to the brown coat. We'll do the stucco finish and build the gate. So on this uh, brown coat, it's basically just a mortar mix, bag mortar mix, which is sand, cement. Um, it's a plastic cement with sand. You can throw some lime in there if you want. But the uh, pre-mix bags come with everything you need in it. You just add water and mix it. So initially we just troweled it on here with a trowel and then as it tightens up you get a, a green sponge keep it wet and smooth it out flatten it all out this is what the stucco is going to bond to stucco goes on very thin but this particular coat hides all the defects in the block the overall height of this wall, even though we've got five blocks in there plus a two inch cap, it's probably about 36 to 40 inch height from a city sidewalk. Because half of that first block is buried below grade. Now it's all cured out. It's all one color. You can't really see the grout joints anymore. So now it's ready to do the stucco finish. Initially, this is the color the um, owners had chosen to match the house, but then they didn't like it. So that was all removed, and then we started over with a uh, white stucco that could be painted the same color as the house in the future. The important thing about putting the stucco on and even the brown coat for that matter is keeping the wall wet and the brown coat wet between you know coats so this is the same procedure as the brown coat the application is a, a trowel just trowel it on there let it set get the sponge flow you can either go you can go with the red sponge or you can go with the green sponge. The green's going to give you a little more texture. The red's a little bit for smoother finishes. In this case, we're going to go with the green sponge.
we're getting down to the final stage here where you're getting your finished product. Stuck was about dry enough to get your final finish with the green sponge float. coming out really nice, really smooth, even. All right, so the wall is pretty dry. We're gonna start building the gate. This is the redwood that we got from Ganals. We got a nice arch radius on top that we drew in with pencil. We're gonna be uh, cutting that right now. We're just setting up a jigsaw so we can get a nice clean cut. Here's how the wall's looking though. say it came out pretty clean now here's the gate build redwood slats redwood two by fours we're going to use the z bracing method We've got some clamps to hold the 2x4s on there, and then we're going to screw it, screws it in after that. Use the jigsaw there to get a radius at the top of the gate. Now we're going to anchor the 2x4s on the sides of the wall to mount the hinges on and the latch. Now we're holding it up an inch and a half, so we just got a, a scrap piece of 2x4 underneath holding the, top, the, the striker plate up off the ground a little bit. Also, that'll be the bottom of the gate height as well. So it uh, swings freely without hitting anything on the bottom. Since the wall's solid grouted, we can drill just about anything in there. It's gonna hold real nice and tight. In this case, I believe we're using some uh, tap cons. Here's your angle brace going in. It prevents the gate from uh, sagging. So the lower end of that is that bracing is going to be where your hinge would be. This is a real simple strong gate design. Lightweight and very durable. Spreading a little topsoil in over that footing so the grass can grow back.
So here's the finished product. A little buffer for uh, incoming vehicle traffic. Looks like that's ready for paint. You know, it could be just left white. Put a nice clear sealer on that wood. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you like them, subscribe, share, and make sure you hit the notification button. That way you get notified on our next upload. Thanks for watching. Bye.